Hi everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be doing an exam preparation guide for the EWPTX examination by eLearn Security. This is a very challenging exam and I'll be giving you general pointers as well as the best areas to study and prepare you for this exam. So let's get into it. So this is how we're going to break down the content of this video. First, I will be showing you the best areas for you to revise the course content from the EWAPTX course. Secondly, I will show you some external tools and labs that you can use to help prepare yourself as best you can. And thirdly, I will be giving you some just general pointers and how to get through this exam. And these are just more so my general advice. So first up, I just want to mention that this exam is very difficult. And I don't think the labs and the course material adequately prepare you for this exam. Furthermore, I got one of the vulnerabilities purely by accident. So I think preparation for this exam is really crucial, especially in the right areas. So these are the eLearn security resources that I recommend you have a look at. I like to group these down into four main components. Your SQL injection, your cross-site scripting, your CSRF, and your XML. With the SQL injections, I do think it is important to focus on filter evasions, but more importantly, it's more important to think outside the box. Think about others, other ways you can do the same thing and really be familiar with your SQL syntax. So the things that you use during your blind injections, for example, the character at, the substring functions, all this sort of stuff, if you know that really well, this will be really, really valuable for you. Cross-site scripting, I thought, was one of the easier parts of this exam. As long as you know basic filter evasions and you think outside the box, I think you should be okay. For CSRF, as long as you make sure that your code is modular and that you understand the process, you should be right if you come across this. For the XML component, make sure that you do plenty of additional research on what you can do with this. I'm trying to be as vague as possible here, so if there's any external links in the slides for XML components, be sure to read those really clearly and understand them. I also recommend watching those XML videos over and over again because there are some very subtle nuances in these videos which are just so crucial for the exam. Next, as an external resource, Hack.me is really good for those lab preparations. In Hack.me, you have little mini labs, just like in eLearn Security, but these are more modular and they can go from very simple labs to, and I think only a handful of people have. So be sure to do some of these exam. So be sure to do some of these examples, but don't go for the true hard ones because that's not really relevant. The more that you know SQL, the more you know the little nuances within your SQL injection queries, the more you can make your code a bit more modular, and then you can apply the injection principles afterwards. So the more you know SQL, the better your injections will be. So to do this, I recommend downloading and installing SQL Workbench onto your local machine. This really helped me just really find the best way I could do these injections. Whenever I was trying to make an in injection, what I would do is first write out my whole query first in SQL Workbench, and then just take out the part that I didn't need, which then I would use for the injection. So apart from studying, what else should you do? Well, firstly, I think it's very, very handy to be able to compile all of your code that you've used throughout this entire course into separate little text documents. So I have a list of cross-site scripting payloads. I've got a list of my SQL injection detection payloads. I've got all the relevant code from the CSRF, XXE, second order SQL injection, and I made this modular enough to be able to adapt it where I need to. It might also help you to do a cheat sheet or a decision matrix to try and find the best way for you to proceed and eliminate possibilities. So my second tip is to understand the functionality of BERT Suite really, really well. 
I found that the intruder module was really, really helpful for what I needed to do, especially that the fact that I had so much options when it came to customizing how my payloads will go out. And thirdly, if you're using a Kali Linux VM, then I highly recommend you take a snapshot just in case anything happens. Now, what about when you are in the actual exam? Well, as I mentioned before, this exam is very tough and even cruel at times. It's really important, as sappy as this might sound, is to manage your emotions. I felt on my first and possibly second day that I had no hope in passing this. I felt very upset. So I can't stress how important it is to just be patient with yourself and understand that the vulnerabilities might not pop out straight off the page like you might expect. I think it's really advisable to take a whole week off work to do this exam. And the general consensus is if you take a Thursday off, then you have Thursday and Friday to get started. You have the whole weekend. And then if you finish early, you can go back to work. If not, you've still got another three days to finish off the exam. It might sound obvious, but make sure you stock up on plenty of healthy food and pre-made meals. This really helped me uh, not spend too much time in the kitchen when I was in the exam and allowed me to focus a lot on the exam without having to worry about cooking. Don't forget, get a few little treats for you for those success moments as well. Now, in terms of how I structured my day when I did this exam, generally I would wake up around 7.30 a.m. and have breakfast and jump on the computer by 8 a.m. with a double shot of coffee in hand. I tend to work to around 1 p.m., taking a small few little breaks in between. Then I would go, obviously, and have some lunch. I'd watch an episode of The Simpsons, purely just to unwind. And then I might take a nap if I feel a little bit drowsy. I'll then return to my computer probably around 2 or 2.30, sometimes 3, and work until about 7.30 at night. In which case, again, heat up a pre-made meal, uh, watch another episode of The Simpsons, and get back to my computer by around 8.30 and work until 10.30 to 12, whenever I felt like I was running out of steam. I also can't stress how important it is to get away from the computer. I guarantee you at some points in the exam, you will get stuck and you won't know how to proceed. I think it's really important just to know when that happens and know how to get away from the computer and go for a walk. When you get away from the computer, your mind relaxes and you start to think of more creative solutions to these problems. I can't tell you how much this helped me during the exam. And my final tip for when you're in the exam is just don't panic. You've got so much time, relax. Well guys, I hope you found those tips helpful. If you did, smash that like button, really helps me out. And if you have any questions, leave them below and I'll answer them. But keep in mind, I will not reveal anything about the exam. And if you wanna see more videos from me, feel free to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And before you go, I've got more eLearn security related content. Click up here for my course review of the WAPTX course and click up here for my exam preparation for the ECPPT V5 exam. Thanks a lot guys and I'll see you in the next one.